Good morning. Welcome to High Ridge Missionary Baptist Church, where we're growing in our faith, relationship, and community. So I got two questions for us. Did anybody need Jesus this week? All right. All right. Second part to that, did he come through for you? So if he did, you ought to show some signs. So yes, thank you, God. To God be the glory for everything that he's done, everything that he's going to do, and everything that he's just in the midst of doing. So um, before we get started, we invite you to stay connected with us. Like, share, subscribe, follow us on YouTube and Facebook. You can also visit the church website for any information. I'll now turn it over to the praise team. Amen. To God be the glory. Can we give God some praise? For this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We just thank God for each and every one of you. Good morning again. And we just ask you to come on and help us celebrate and lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Because he is worthy, so worthy to be praised. Say the scripture says, Psalm 27, 5 says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. How many are glad that you know that you have a hiding place in Christ Jesus? How many know you have a refuge and protection in Christ Jesus? So we're going to come and say a song, the old song. Y'all know it. It says, I'm going to hide behind the mountain because why? Jesus is that mountain. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Y'all know, come on, put them hands together. gonna hide behind, behind that mountain. I'm gonna hide behind, hide behind Yeah. 
Those who can will have scripture reading followed by prayer. Good morning, congregation at High Ridge Missionary Baptist Church. All right, all right. I'll be reading from King James Version, Second Chronicles, chapter five. Thus, all the work of Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in all the things that David, the, his father, had dedicated, and the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of the of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of children of Israel unto Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Amen. 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 Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Fathers, once more and again, we come before your throne of grace. First of all, Lord, we want to thank you for every good and perfect gift that you have bestowed upon us. Yes. <clears throat> Realize that we can't do anything without you. We thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Yes, yes. Might not want to be where we want to be, but we think we'll get on the land of the living. Yes. Yes. We thank you for a reasonable portion of food that you give us for yes. the nourishment of our bodies. We thank you for clothes that we had to hide our neck. Yes. Again, Lord, we thank you for everything. Yes. We might have went out and bought stuff, but if you didn't bless us, we didn't have the money to do it. Yes. Continue to go with us and stand by us. We ask you right now to search our hearts and minds. If you find anything lurking around that it shouldn't be, we ask you just to remove it right now. Continue to go with us and make a way where there seems to be no way. We love you. We honor you. We ask you to bless our pastor who bring forth the word. Yes, Give him down into the walls of salvation and stand him on the wall. Yes. Take him out of self and break him to us, the bread of life. You see that we stand in need of. Yeah. Again, we love you. We ask you to continue to bless the sick wherever they are. Yes. Comfort those heavenly fathers that are mourning over the seas. Yes. And do these things for us, Lord. We will forever give you all the praise and glory. For it's in your blessed name we ask it all. Amen. 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 And amen. amen.
All my help, all of my help comes from the Lord. Comes from the Lord. All of my help, all of my help comes from the Lord. Comes from the Lord. Whenever I need. Comes from the Lord. Comes from the Lord. All of my help. All of my help. Comes from the Lord. Comes from the Lord. Whenever I need the Lord, I need him. He walks. He walks by my side. I need to know He walks. Father, I stretch. Father, I stretch my hands to Thee. My hands to Thee. No other help. No other help that I know. That I know. Can I get a witness? Whenever I need a love. When you call them, there's healing. When you call them, deliverance. When you call them, stay there till he bless you. Stay there till he heal you. My help, my help, my help, my help. Way maker, my help. Burden bearer, my help. My regulator, my help. Jesus, Jesus, I call him. When I'm sick, I call him. In trouble, I call him. When I need him, Jesus, 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 Jesus. There's power when you call him. There's healing when you call him. Salvation when you call him. Jesus, 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 Jesus. My help, my help, my help, my help. Come from, oh yeah. Most a very present help in the time of trouble. And because of that, we ought to be able to give God some praise on this morning. Oh, come on, somebody. We ought to be able to lift up our hands and give God some glory. Oh, come on, somebody. We ought to be able to lift up our voice and give God some praise. Oh, come on. Come on, somebody. Anybody glad that he is your help? A very present help in the time of trouble. It's all right, praise team. Y'all can sing it. Go ahead and sing it. They ain't convinced yet. 
my help, my help. I need somebody here understand of my voice that knows if it wasn't for the Lord on your side, where would you be right now? Lift up your voice, lift up your hand. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. I should have been. I could have been sleeping in my grave. Jesus. 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 My help. My help. My bill. My bill player. My way maker. My darkness. My light in darkness. My help. My help. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Give me that old Baptist clap. Come on. If he's been your help through 2023 already, give him glory. Come on and give him praise. You thought the pandemic was going to take you out of here. But it was by God's grace and his mercy that kept you from falling. Jesus, Jesus, my help, my help. I call him when I need him. I call him in trouble. My help, my help, my help, my help, my help. Coming from Jesus. Jesus. All my help. All of my help. Come from the Lord. All my help. All of my help. Come from the Lord. Jesus. Father, we thank you right now for your grace, your mercy, and your goodness towards us. God, we come to your house this morning, God, asking that you renew us again. We didn't come for a show. We didn't come for a performance. God, but we came this morning with the express purpose of lifting up your name. And God, we ask right now that you tear up our little agendas. God, we ask right now that you get in the mix of what we got going on right now. God, there's some who are here with heavy hearts. God, but we thank you for being the lifter up of our head. There's somebody this morning who's been wrestling all week with depression. But God, we thank you for being our peace. God, for giving us that peace this morning that surpasseth all understanding. There's someone here this morning, God, who was overwhelmed by the cares of life. But God, we thank you for renewing our strength to keep on fighting through whatever it is that we may be dealing with right now. And God, we ask right now, God, as we're worshiping you, as we are praising you, 
God, we ask right now that you restore unto us the joy of our salvation. We feel your power already here. We feel your presence already here. And God, we push past how we feel right now to give you more glory, to give you more honor, to give you more praise. God, we acknowledge your presence. God, we acknowledge your goodness on this morning. We acknowledge the fact that we would not have gotten up this morning had it not been for you. God, we acknowledge the fact that we could not have dressed ourselves this morning had it not been for you. God, we acknowledge the fact that it was you who brought us to this place safely without being in any, any accidents or anything dangerous happening to us. God, we acknowledge the fact this morning that you sent your son to die on the cross for us. In all of our mess, God, you saved us. And because of these things, we will exalt your name. Because of these things, we will lift you up and give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. We thank you now, Lord. We thank you now, Lord. We thank you now, Lord, for what you're going to do for the further part of this service. We open ourselves up to you. We yield ourselves to you this morning have your way in this place use me oh God for your glory Lord I have nothing to offer without your spirit I have absolutely nothing to offer without your wisdom so we ask right now God that you do it again move Keyshawn out of the way and God we thank you now for having your way like never before in Jesus name we ask these and all of the blessings Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Can we just take one more chance to just give God some glory in his house? It's so good to see everybody this morning. I mean it when I say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I mean that truly this morning as we know that this week has been challenging for many people. Many of you have pressed your way. And because of your pressing this morning, God wants to do something phenomenal for you. So just yield yourself to him and open yourself up to what he wants to do in and through you this morning. I want to say a special thank you to our praise team uh, for singing our hearts happy this morning by reminding us that our help comes from the Lord. We're so grateful for our musicians who could have been anywhere else but thank God for their dedication and their commitment to the purpose here at High Ridge. Thankful also for our audiovisual ministry, for live streaming our service, and also for our ushers who are standing so valiantly at the door. To God be the glory for everybody and everything. Can we just give God praise for everybody in their respective places? Our leadership, you all who, who are here this morning looking so wonderfully. I want, don't want to belabor the point, but I want to share with you a word that the Lord has laid upon my heart that I have been wrestling with uh, this week. And there's a very familiar passage of scripture that I want to share as our text this morning. And that comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It's a few verses beginning at verse number 3. Again, very familiar passage of scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 through verse 5. Verse 3 through 5. And this morning, I will be reading from the New International Version. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning at verse number 3. We find there recorded these words by the Apostle Paul. For though we live in the world... We do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Some translations say carnal. And the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 
May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. And for a few moments, I want to speak from the subject. It's all in my head. It's all in my head. Conquering the battle of the mind. Lord, bless us now and we will be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Deacon Penn, I will have you know that this past Friday, I went to the doctor for just a checkup. And I went in. All things are going well. Check-in was simple, quick, and easy. The, actually, the fastest check-in I've ever experienced in a long, long time. So happy and so glad. And then I got back to the little place where they, you know, to do a little blood pressure, temperature check, and all that kind of stuff. Everything was still going well. The nurse was so nice and pleasant. And then she asked me to step over here on the scale. And I was excited because I knew that, you know, things were well in that area as well. And then I stepped on the scale to my surprise. The numbers weren't adding up to what I assumed or what I thought that they should be. And so I asked the nurse, well, maybe I should take my keys out my pocket and my phone and my wallet out. And maybe I should take my shoes off and maybe that will make uh, these numbers be more accurate in the way they should be. And she said, no, this scale is what it is, and what you see is what it is. You can't manipulate it. You can't change it. It is what it is. And I became so discouraged. I became so upset and disappointed. Lord, have mercy. Because I had convinced myself that I was skinny. And you want to know where it started from? That's because some of our brothers and sisters around this church for the past couple of months were saying these encouraging things. Well, it looks like you slimming down. Oh, you getting skinny, pastor. And some of them sitting right here in this sanctuary. And when I heard those things, I convinced myself that something has changed. I lost a lot of weight. And in fact, I was building something up in my head that did not really exist. I was living this false reality that somehow I was skinny. All because of what somebody had placed in my head. And I lived out my life that way. Some of y'all might recall the times that we had different things in the fellowship hall. And I would try to squeeze past some of y'all in the chairs. And I said, no, don't move. I, I'm skinny now. I can slide through. <laughs> but that wasn't the case. And I, I should have paid attention to the red flags instead of listening to what some of you folk were telling me the whole time. <laughs> trying to put on these extra large shirts when you know good and well that that's not your size and trying to pull out the stuff that's been that back in the closet trying to convince yourself that you can fit this stuff again and I was standing in a mirror <laughs> con trying to convince myself of some reality that did not exist and that's how the enemy can be sometime when we allow him to use other people to put certain things in our minds we begin to live and think in this false reality that's not of God and that's not true. We believe the lies that he puts in our brains and in our minds, pushing us into these negative cycles of thinking. And when you're thinking through these negative cycles, your mind becomes triggered from a sense of disappointment, frustration, or this perceived lack of progress or success and our minds get stuck on a loop of constantly replaying our past failures our mistakes or just doom and gloom about your future and one of the things that I'm struggling with I have to be honest in my mind I've struggled with for a long time and that's overthinking good God Almighty because we excessively analyze certain situations and things and we overthinking Lord have mercy and we always are consumed by the what if. All right. All right. What if it don't work out? What if it do work out? What if this happens? Or what if that happens? Playing these scenarios out in our minds, always second-guessing ourselves. 
And when we get locked into these fortresses in our mind, we lose our perspective on the goodness of God. It becomes harder to see that God promises to make all things work for our good. We become so fixated and stuck on, all, on, on the same wrong things all of the time that we forget who our God is and what our God is able to do even when it seems like it is impossible. Our minds will have us forgetting what God promised us in his word. The Lord himself promised that he'll go before you and be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. He promised us in his word that those who wait on him, he shall renew our strength. We'll mount up on wings like an eagle. We'll run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. Jesus, in his word, in the gospel, promised that with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. God promised us in his word that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Promised us in his word now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Tells in his word, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And when our minds are locked behind these fortresses, we forget what God has spoken to us in his word. And this is why the enemy desires to invade or flood our minds with these broken thoughts of lies, of confusion, of mistrust and doubt and fear and anxiety. Our mind, as you know, is the battlefield that the enemy seeks to gain control of our ability to seek God to walk in his truth, to grow in his power, to grow in his wisdom, to grow in the Lord's strength. That's why Proverbs 23 and 7, the first part says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. And the enemy knows this. And you better believe he is fighting to cause us to derail our faith, our hope, and our confidence in the Lord, if we are consistently dwelling on the negative, he knows he can set us up to self-defeat ourselves by our own thoughts because we will begin to see ourselves unworthy. We'll begin to see ourselves incapable of doing what God has already promised and God has already made the way for you to be able to do. You know how he is. He'll bombard our minds with the lies, seeking to deceive us or cause us to deceive ourselves, looking at other people strange and then looking at God with the side eye. But I want to tell y'all this morning that we have the power to overcome these lies through the truth of God's words. And we got to stand up and rise up and start rejecting this negative talk, this negative self-talk in our minds. We got to reject the doubt and the fear by replacing them with what God has already promised us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, deeply loved by God. You have been chosen by God. And not, not a thing in this world, not a thing in hell can undo that promise. This is why we are called to fight and engage in battle against every plan, against every tactic of the enemy by reminding ourselves of what God has already spoken. He's already said you have the power to do anything. He's already said, I've already done the work. You just got to walk in it. You are victorious. And stop self-doubting. Stop self-defeating yourself in your 
mind. God, God has already spoken to many of us. He, he, and, and, and we keep saying that I'm going to wait on the Lord. God is sitting there and said, I don't know why you're waiting on me. I've already given you the plan. I've already spoke it to you. I already placed it in your heart. It's, it's so discouraging sometimes to hear people lay out a plan and say, well, God placed it upon my heart to do such and such or so and so. But I don't think I want to do it. I want to give it to somebody else. God gave that thing to you. And, and we let good visions die. We let good promises and good purposes die. Lord, have mercy, because we are scared to just step out on what God has already told you to do. Our text this morning, I'm, I'm going to be quick on this. Our text this morning reminds us of the truth that we can embrace to overcome the battle in our mind. It's all in my head. And the battle that rages in our mind is real. It's not a fake thing. It's real. But we also know that we are victorious and we have the power to overcome every battle in our mind. 2 Corinthians 10, the Apostle Paul provides for us this powerful reminder for understanding. First of all, you got to know what it is that you're fighting. But also you got to know what it is you're fighting and you got to know how to fight this thing as well. He writes here, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Our weapons have divine strength and power to bring down some strongholds. And this is the reality of this battle that we fight. And we got to start right there by acknowledging the reality of the battles that we have to face. And he says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Our struggle, as much as we want to target the things that go on around us, our, str our struggle is not with the outward things. However, these battles are spiritual and mental. We fight against thoughts. We fight against imaginations. We fight against strongholds that hinder our faith, that hinder our hope, that hinder our obedience to God, that hinder our worship, that hinders our praise, that hinders our relationships, that hinder our spiritual growth. And we know those strongholds exist. Lord have mercy. Because they fortify us that when we come into the sanctuary where we're supposed to be free to worship God in spirit and in truth. And we, there we are hiding behind this fortress that I ain't going to lift my hands today. I'm not going to give God the glory today. I'm just going to sit here and be in my pity party waiting for somebody to come and ask me what's going on with you. Not understanding that you have the victory to overcome whatever it is that is trying to control your thoughts. Mm. We have the power to overcome huh, those strongholds. And sometimes, Lord have mercy, the enemy knows how to set a trap for us that sometimes we don't even realize that we're hiding behind some type of stronghold or some type of fortress. Because we've been in it for so long. We've been cycling through it for so long that we don't even realize that it's hindering our progress. And so we learn how to live with it and embrace it and say stuff like, it's just who I am. This is just how I'm supposed to be. No, you got to tear down that stronghold to be able to move forward in the liberty that Christ has brought to you. We often live in unhappy. We're often living joyless. We're often living without peace. And, and we know that's why Christ came in the first place, to bless us with those things. But because we have these strongholds that we have built around us. But in this season, God is saying it is time to tear down these strongholds. Lord, have mercy. And Paul wants us to understand right here that 
there is a greater reality beyond what we see. And see, sometimes we are so engulfed in this battle in our minds that we try to project it on the things around us. We're often running around screaming and hollering at people that have nothing to do with the battle that's going on in our minds. Some of us are upset with some folk, and we don't even know why we're mad at them. We don't even know why we snapped at them. We don't even know why we got this attitude like we got, because we're living behind this fortress, and we're taking it out on people and places and things that have nothing to do with where the battle is raging at in the first place. Your family can see it. They see the disposition. They see how you can be snappy. They see how you can be agitated. Why not stand up and pull down these strongholds so that you can be free, so you can, be, you can walk in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free? They don't want to come over anymore. They didn't even invite you to the family functions anymore because they know when you get there, it's going to be some mess because you were raging these battles in your mind and they don't want to have anything to do with you until you get yourself together. Pull down these strong holes. And how must we do that? Well, he offers the solution here with the weapons that we use to fight with here in verse 4. But before we get to that, don't forget what Ephesians 6, 10 through 12 reminds us of. Paul writes there also to be strong in the Lord and to put on the full armor of God to stand against the schemes and the wiles of the enemy. In other words, the victory has already been secured. The, uh, Lord have mercy. Jesus has already snatched the teeth out of the enemy's mouth. And he's running around screaming and hollering, trying to make things look as worse than they really are. And sometimes we get spooked hmm, by a false enemy who's already been defeated. Am I talking to anybody in here this morning? He'll try to creep up on you in your doctor's visit. He'll try to creep up on you while you're laying in the bed. He'll try to creep up on you while you're standing there in the kitchen and put stuff in your mind. Lord, have mercy. Make you feel like something's going on in your brain and you're spooked by something that's not really there. We ought to be able to stand up and say, Satan, I bind you up right now in the name of I take control of my thoughts. I take control of these evil and these wicked thoughts that's playing out in my head. Well, you remember what you did in 1996. There's some folk out there who hadn't forgave you for that. There were some folks out there who actually saw you do that. You know that, right? Put all these things in your mind in 1996, and here it is, 2023. God has already freed you. God has already delivered you. God has already grown you past that. Let it go. Pull down that stronghold that the enemy tries to remind you of your past. And you ought to be able to stand firm on, this, on the word of God and look the enemy square in his face. Yes, I know. Yes, I was involved. Yes, I was there. But thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy that brought me from a mighty long way. Ooh. Your victory has already been secured. And he tries his best to come up on you in those moments where you're not even suspecting that he, you didn't heard a wonderful church service. You heard the spirit of God was in the service and your praise was high. You didn't shout it and fell out and danced. You heard a good word. And as soon as you leave the sanctuary, you know it wasn't real. <laughs> you was just in there showing out. No, but you need to look the enemy dead in his face. My praise is for real. Because when I'm reminded of where God has brought me from, my praise ain't nothing to play with. It. You don't know like I know what the Lord has brought me through. Get in the car. 
get that text message. Somebody acting up in the family. They want to call you with some drama. Any kind of way he try to creep up, especially after you heard a word and you praise, and then here comes some foolishness, but you ought to huh, pull down that stronghold and remind yourself of what Christ has already done for you. He says here, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And I want to thank God this morning that we are not defenseless. Lord, have mercy. God has equipped us with everything we need to be able to overcome every spiritual battle that takes place in our mind. You got to pray more. Oh, huh. we got to learn how to pray more even when we feel like praying is inconvenience. When the Holy Spirit unction you to get on your knees or, or, or unctions you to pray right then, don't wait. Don't say, I'm going to wait till I get to the house. No, if the Holy Spirit told you to pray, pray then. I got to go into my secret closet. Some battles you can't go and fight in secret. Some things you got to stand square, flat-footed in the enemy's face and fight it right then and there. Because he wants to make us timid to bow out and go and do these things and that, the, those things that we forget that we have the power to fight that thing right then and there. We got to stay true to the word of God. I know we like looking at reading self-help books, and I know we like to look at or listen to podcasts. I know we like to look at these YouTube self-help help videos and all these things to help us to be encouraged. Many of us got life coaches and all this kind of stuff to help us get through. But sometimes you just need to sp spend some time in the Word of God. Oh, my. It's quiet. And there's no more excuses. There's all kind of versions that you can read. There's baby Bibles. There's newborn Bibles. All kind of Bibles. There's no excuse. Get you what you need. Whatever you need, and as you grow, then you grow with it. So it doesn't make a difference. You get the word of God however you need to get. They have Bibles that will literally read to you. Sometimes I just turn my Bible on while I'm in the shower, just listen to the word of God, try to saturate my mind. Oh, Lord, however you need to get the word of God, you get the word of God. But most importantly, you got to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit by discerning. And we lost this by discerning. Oh, my God, what's of God and what's not of God. Many times we've gotten so comfortable that we're starting to call stuff godly when it has nothing to do with God at all. And that takes discernment to see beyond what the enemy is trying to do, even in God's house. A stronghold, I'm almost done, is a mental or spiritual fortress that the enemy builds to hold us captive. To prevent us from fully experiencing the freedom and the liberty in Christ. These strongholds begin to be built sometimes because our negative pattern of thinking. Like I told you earlier, through self-defeating. These strongholds can also manifest through the addictions that we hold on to. Lord have mercy. Oh, some harmful behaviors that we indulge in every now and then, saying that we're trying to cope. But God wants to free us from using those things as a crutch. I know it's legal, but you ain't got to keep relying on it all the time. I know, I know you want to take a sip every now, but don't use it as a crutch. <laughs> To, 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 don't use that as a crutch. Lord have mercy. Why get quiet? I know there's certain things you want to watch and you want to see, but don't let that be a crutch. Ask God to free you. That you don't have to fall back on those things that keep pulling you down because the enemy wants to keep you locked right there in that stronghold, in that cycle. Strongholds are built to help us or cause us to resist the truth of God's word and the work of the Holy Spirit. 
But right now is that time. Right now is that moment that we got to pull down those strongholds. And I'm sorry you can't stand idly by and wait for the walls to fall. You can't expect the pastor or the deacons or anybody else to pray your walls or your strongholds down. You can't call mama. You can't call daddy. You can't rely on anybody else to pull your strongholds down. You're going to have to stand flat foot and pull your own strongholds down. You got to first acknowledge the reality that it's causing some stuff to go on in you that ain't right. And it's time for me to get myself out of it. And God is calling us like never before to rise up and take authority and tear down these strongholds of fear and anxiety. There's so many people who are popping pills because they are so anxious because the enemy has fortified their minds of, with so much worry and concern. But we got to tear down those strongholds of fear and anxiety. The enemy has caused us to build that stronghold of unforgiveness in our minds. That we're hiding ourselves behind. Thinking that we're doing the right thing by ignoring people. Thinking that we're doing the right thing by shutting people out because they hurt us so bad. But I, you got, please know and understand that you got to get this thing right before you cross on over to the other side. Because you can't walk around with unforgiveness in your heart. Walk around and ask God to tear down these strongholds of addiction. The stronghold of pride and arrogance and thinking that we are self-sufficient, that we can do this thing all by ourselves. No, that's what the enemy wants you to think, and he'll set you up so high. Got you thinking that you're high and mighty and that you got it all, you got it all going on, and then all of a sudden you fall. And that's when God causes you to realize that you got to walk in humility. Pull down this stronghold of bitterness. Whew. There's so many bitter people, so many people who are resentful, who are hiding behind these stronghold of bitterness and resentment. Ask God to tear it down. This stronghold of low self-esteem, this stronghold of self-hatred. And it's evident in how you treat other people because you, not, you don't like yourself. Pull down that stronghold and remember that God called you to this. He gave you a purpose. He saved you and set you free. Pull down this stronghold of doubt and unbelief and uncertainty. Know without a shadow of a doubt that God is going to work this thing out in his own time. Tear down this stronghold of control and manipulation. Sometimes we don't realize how awful that stronghold is when we're trying to control people and manipulate people. Well, if you don't do this and if you don't do like I want you to do, then I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk to you no more. Pull down that stronghold of control and manipulation. It can be right here in God's house. Pull down that stronghold of control and manipulation. I'm not going to let you serve on this. I'm not going to let you do that because of your past and because of this. You ain't got nothing to do with that. Unless you be in my group. Unless you're in my clique. Oh, control and manipulation. Trying to pull the strings and Treat people like they are puppets. And every time you say something, they ought to jump when you say. Y'all don't believe this exists, do you? It's real. And people try to control you and manipulate you. And you see right through it. Don't let that stronghold exist any longer. Pull it down. And pull down... This stronghold of this religious spirit. Whew. What are you talking about? 
The enemy will cause us sometimes to hide ourselves behind the stronghold of this religious spirit. That we think that we're doing the will of God, but we really don't have a real relationship with him. And we're doing stuff out of religious obligation and not because we have a relationship with the Lord. And if you're doing it because of your religious obligation, God is not going to honor that because all that stuff has fallen away in the first place. Christ came to fulfill the law. So you can sit there and do all this stuff and say all these rules, these regulations and this and that. And some people got these long lists of rules that you know good and well you ain't keeping yourself. It makes, it disgusts me sometimes to hear huh, how, how we try to control people through religion as well. Yes, Lord have mercy. Y'all ain't supposed to drink. You ain't supposed to do this. You ain't supposed to do that. But you ain't done nothing ever, right? <laughs> Amen, light. Pull down this stronghold of this of this religious spirit that turns people away from not God because they're getting God, but from the fellowship of the church with these self-righteous attitudes, thinking that we we that we all our life we've just been floating through the heavenly clouds with halos on us. That we ain't done nothing, that we ain't never been nowhere. I've all to church into my house, you a lie. I don't watch stuff like that. I don't listen to stuff like that. I don't say stuff like that. They caught you. But now is the time to tear down these strongholds because God wants us to be free. Colossians 3, and I promise I'm almost done because I feel a little tight in here. Somebody upset with me, but it's going to be all right. Colossians 3 and 2 says, set your mind's on things above and not on this stuff on the earth. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. The last thing I want to encourage you with is Isaiah 26 and 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on. Mm. Isn't it good to know that we have that as a promise for God? That when we're fighting these battles, we can remind ourselves that he will keep us in perfect peace. But in this war... My brothers and sisters, I'm not going to be dismayed. And you ought not be dismayed either because we can declare victory over our mind. Even when the enemy tries to whisper his lies, trying to bring us down to a low place, filling our thoughts with fear, we don't have to stand for it. But we can stand firm in the truth that in Christ's name that I can pull down these strongholds. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded. Anybody else persuaded this morning? That neither death nor life, angels or principalities or devils or powers or things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can we give God some praise this morning? Because we have everything that we need to Overcome this battle that's in our minds. It's all in our head. But thank God that we have the victory through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Father, we thank you right now. 
Many of us have been wrestling for so long in our thinking and in our mind. And we're overwhelmed. But God, we made a decision today. We made our declaration today on this day. That we will continue to fight to tear down these strongholds that the enemy has tried to capture us with. And we're reminded today of the victory that you already given to us through your son, Jesus Christ. And there may be someone here this morning. You heard about it, but you want to know about it for yourself. We invite you to come. Not for the sake of tradition or out of religious obligation, but we invite you to come to make a public declaration to the enemy that he has lost. That he has no longer any place in your mind or in your life. And on this day, you are making the decision to give your all to the Lord. We invite you to come. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter how long you've been hanging around this place or any church. If you need him to renew, today is your day. Thank you, Jesus. He's here for you. Thank you, Lord. If you are looking or seeking a place to connect with, to help you grow on your spiritual journey, we are here for you as your family in Christ. To help you on your journey in growing in faith, relationship, and community. God desires, hmm, hallelujah, to transform you, your life. And why not do it by and give him back to God by serving him? He's here this morning, and whatever you need, you get it from God. Right where you are, you begin to pray your own prayer. You begin to seek him for yourself. You begin to, to ask God to come into your heart. There's no magical formula. There's no script to go by. It's all about faith. And even if you leave this place, he's still with you. You can call on him in your car. You can call on him at home. You can call on him in the grocery store. Wherever you are, he will meet you right where you are. Hallelujah. Father, no one has come. God, but we thank you for moving in the lives of your people. God, we thank you for your strength, your encouragement this morning to help us to keep fighting and to understand, Lord, that this battle is not over just yet. But we're thankful this morning for the reminder of the weapons that we have that we can cast down every stronghold and imagination and anything that tries to rise up against the truth of your word. Make us whole again. Hallelujah. Restore and set us free this morning. God, we pray for healing. Hallelujah. Over anyone, Lord, who is broken this morning. Anyone who is sick in their body. God, we thank you for healing and restoration. For anyone who is struggling, even mentally. God, we thank you for peace of mind. As we're tearing down these strongholds. God, we give you the glory. God, we give you the honor. God, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Can we celebrate God and thank him for the victory? <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
Say none, you have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand be for us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the big Glory. Y'all believe that this morning? Y'all be singing. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to flee. Oh. Sing that one more time. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, say it on, you have to flee. victorious people you are we are more than conquerors we are victorious this morning as we are preparing to leave this place there's a few things I want to remind you of let's continue praying for those who are on our sick and shut-in list and let's continue praying for those who are uh, in bereavement and dealing with grief because it is real also I just want to update you and let you all know that because of this being a season of graduation locally, uh, we, have, um, re we will reschedule our mental health awareness seminar that was originally uh, planned to take place on May 27th at 10.30 a.m., but we will uh, give you an updated date uh, for that uh, upcoming. But also I want to remind you that today after this morning worship, um, Sister Velma Joyce and the program committee are asking you to stay just for a little bit so they can uh, take care of a few matters. Are there any birthdays, anniversaries, life celebrations, things that we, this morning, anybody? Y'all are getting so well, y'all don't like to say nothing about your birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to Sister Velma, Sister Ashley, Sister Stephanie. Happy birthday. Anybody else in the house? Any, anybody anniversaries? Any? To God be the glory. We also, uh, was mentioned earlier, but I want to give you in further details. We want to congratulate uh, Brother Brendan Easley for qualifying in the 200 meter meters for the VHSL Outdoor Track Comp Championship at Liberty University. Amen. Amen. When I lose a little more weight, I'm going to be able to catch up with you, I promise. Well, don't give me that look. 
He also earned the title of Piedmont District Champion in that event. Brendan has also agreed to run track for P&H for the fall semester. Amen. Let's give him another hand. We also mentioned our previous graduates from last Sunday, but we're thankful for all of those uh, scholars who are moving and advancing and doing great things. Uh, uh, by way of announcement, I also want you to, to be aware, I put, we put this on Facebook, but we're going to do another upcoming book study uh, uh, right along the same author, Tom S. Rainey. Uh, I am a Christian. We'll begin on that on Wednesday, June the 7th at 7 p.m. here in person and via Zoom. Uh, the only change in this, that you can purchase your own copy of this book all for Amazon. Because last time we st stood out there and bought up all this stuff, nobody showed up. But that's all right. Uh, you can buy your own version this time, and you can come and join us here at the church if you so desire. Amen, church. Amen. Shout out to our women's ministry who is on the move. Uh, they had an outing yesterday, and we saw the wonderful pictures, and uh, from the looks of it, they had a great time. To God be the glory. It's just good to celebrate the growth and what God is doing here at High Ridge. Can we give them another round of applause? <laughs> to God be the glory. Is there anything I'm missing? All right. You can stand on your feet at this time. Well, I'm just going to pray over you because uh, y'all stay for a meeting, right? God, we just want to thank you for what our hearts and minds have felt in this place. God, we just want to thank you for the victory that we feel right now. We are champions because of Christ. God, continue to stand with us, go with us, and keep us in your presence, in your care. As we leave this place, but never from your, your presence, we honor you, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Look at somebody and tell them, I love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it.